So hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to Disco Elysium, where we have, well, multiple things I want to do, and at least one thing I need to do. So, here's the thing. I kind of really want to be able to boil those boots. Like a lot. Like a lot, a lot. So I need to get rid of Kim to do that. Thing is, I want him around for the investigation part, and because he's just so delightful. Um, so... I'm keeping him around for now, but I honestly don't know. Well, there's a lot of things I don't know. First of all, what does the scab mean? Really, dude? Really? 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 Okay. That's gonna take a lot to unpack, but, uh... Supposedly there's two more drivers, I think it said. I believe it claimed that there are two more. Whereas the only one I know of is this racist lorry driver, so I'm curious who the third driver is. Looking for something odd, huh? Coming to tell me to fuck off again? Yes. Always. You're a lorry man, right? What's your stance on drugs? Drugs, they're shit, man. I don't let anything pollute my body. He takes a long drag on his cigarette, not thinking for even 10 seconds. You know, why not? You know where that shit comes from? Sabarmirza. Safre. Il Mara. They take the money from our local junkies here and then use it to outcompete us in the manufacturing site. Really? Really? Is that what they do? They know they can't beat us in a fair fight, so they have to get us to weaken ourselves somehow. It's racial sabotage. Racial economic sabotage. Hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Here's the thing. I don't agree with him at all. But, I'm going to be a good cop and investigate. Listen, I agree, it's our responsibility to keep the, this poison off the streets of Revishal, right? I don't, but yeah. He eyes you warily, unsure how to respond. This goes on for about two seconds, then. I don't know shit, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. He puffs on a cigarette. Then what are you still hanging around here for? Most other camioners... What? Have left. What do you think? I can't leave the lorry unguarded. Stuff's been getting looted lately. There's a little kips sneaking around at night. If they touch my stuff, the bosses will be on my ass like ass cancer. There's a bunch of spilled boxes in the back of the big lorry nearby. I did see one lorry with the trailer doors open on my way here. Do you know what happened? Yeah, I knew that guy. He was an honest driver who loved his country. We were having a good debate about genetics and the whirling and rags when some kip boys smashed his lock and took damn near everything. Lost his fucking job over it. Takes a long suck on his cigarette, appearing to savor the taste. Since he left, I haven't had anyone to talk to. They're getting drunk inside the Roiling and Rags. How could they know who broke into the lorry? Huh. If y'all were at the Whirling, how do you know it was Kips who broke into the lorry? Or aren't we allowed to say it's the Kips who do all the stealing around here? It's not rotor science, man. Rotor science? Instead of rocket science for the airships, the rotors, uh... If it's not you, then who's running drugs through Terminal B? Isn't it obvious? Fucking C. Lang, that beady-eyed South Samaritan, spits on the ground. His little side business is a scam. I wouldn't be surprised if he was peddling drugs as well. Who's that? He's a Samaritan guy who likes to pretend he's some kind of businessman. Really just selling his employer's stuff. Stuff he stole after he broke the seals on his Humanox Lloyd. Oh, after he broke the seals on his Humanox Lloyd? What? Where do I find him? Just follow the smell. It smells like apricots and oil when you're nearby. Lorryman lets out a raspy croak at his own sense of humor. Yes, yes. Where is he? Looks like I offended your partner there. He doesn't look at the lieutenant. Too bad. Si Lang's usually a bit south of here, near the canal. If you can't miss him, just watch yourself. His tribe are natural liars. It's in their blood. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I totally trust this face. He nods in a sagely manner, then another puff of the cigarette. He's your man, alright. 100%. Wouldn't be so sure about it, not until we've heard what Silang ha himself has to say. Guess we need to play uh, Silang a visit then. Can I ask? You got a smoke? No. You got a smoke right there and it's fucking in. Snatch that shit out of his fat fingers. You need it after listening to his garbage. Then I'm gonna need the one you're smoking. Yeah. You're smoking one right now. My last one. You hiding smokes from me? Why would I do that? I'm an honest man. He puts out a cigarette and flicks the tiny stub toward the street. Cool, cool, cool. Change my mind anyway. I bet. 
His cool gaze pierces deep with noxious effluence wafting in the surrounding area. Oh, there we go. Sorry I couldn't be of any help because you're ambivalently mocking half nod. What are you hauling? Not much anymore, I'm here to pick up some cargo. The lock worker's on strike, so it's a sit and wait on your ass situation. How's this been going on then? The strike? They've been at it for a while, a month, two months maybe, gestures towards the lorries. But this here is just the last week or so. What kind of cargo are you supposed to pick up? Apples, ah. Didn't I already say this already? Apples, yeah, apples. That's it. I could have sworn I already gone through this, but I evidently no. Sounds like a cover story to me. Look, Ace Detective. I come from a long line of lawyermen. We got ancient rights and privileges. I definitely have seen this already. What? Maybe from when I loaded way back when and I didn't do this. I, hmm. Oh, so it's out of the. Sorry. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so he's clearly the guy. Fuck, complete kingdom of conscience. What do we have? God, that picture. Hmm. More list dialogue options. Heal one morale. Learning cap for volition, raised to five. Learning cap for logic, raised to five. Raised to five, not by five. That's kind of garbage. Oh, well. The Kingdom of Conscience will be exactly as it is now. Moralists don't really have beliefs. Sometimes they stumble on one like on a child's toy left on the carpet. The toy must be put away immediately, and the child reprimanded. Centrism isn't change, not even incremental change. It's control over yourself and the world. Exercise it. Look up at the sky at the dark shapes of coalition airships hanging there. Ask yourself, is there something sinister in moralism? And then answer no. God is in his heaven. Everything is normal on Earth. Uh-huh. Hmm. Curious, that. Hmm. All right. Oh, hey, there's someone. Hello, you. You seem like the sort of guy who'd be doing drugs. Simple little cadence. He seems to be making up as he goes. Yes. Hello. It's the jam, my man. Motions towards the sprawl of the lorries with a sweeping gesture. The air from the east is thick with the smell of crude oils, heavy metals, and other byproducts of the modern era. You can almost taste it. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, and all around cluster fuck. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo, for days upon days upon days. Upon days. Huh. Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. Uh, so how long have you been here? Feels near forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout, and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Mazout, huh? Sure, I've got any phrase, but I can roll yeah, with it. Imagine. It's been a whole week already. So tell me, what do you need? Care to spare some change for working stiff? Huh? Sudden financial duties snap him out of his days. Oh, no, I ain't got any money. They want to pay for unfinished work. They who? The bosses, man. Hmm. I don't know who these bosses think they are, but that sounds like a good arrangement for them. Yeah, it sure ain't good for me or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down his luck. If I had, say, four myself. What are you hauling, anyway? No oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Relax, he's merely joking. Wicked, I've always wanted a friend in the underworld. <laughs> no, I'm joking, my man. He grins. Fallen runs a nice, clean business. This all of cargo is mostly sporting goods, you know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. Usually get shipped to Grod and the Occident, though we've been making headway to the... Il... Il Marin. Market later. I really need you to say that, buddy. Is that your machine behind you? Miss Rockin' Beauty, he points at the lawyer with his thumb. Sure is, like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? Motor lorry, also called a camion. Ah, camioneers. I see. On Kailu and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of a fallen rust bucket. Maybe the A6? 
I don't know, fallen ace. Apparently, I'm a car guy, interestingly. Good eye, my man. Yep, she's an old one, but reliable. He gives the side of the Loria a friendly knock. Me and her spent a long time then. Can I get one of those uh, fallen tracksuits you're hauling? We're piles and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. Nothing illegal then. Well, let's save illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. Alright, I had another question. Uh, you seem like a man who knows about drugs. Ah, me and me and narcotics go way back. He folds his hand behind his head and leans back. I had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But, he pauses, letting the memory dissipate. Those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Hmm. Let me be straight with you. I'm trying to figure out who's smuggling drugs out of Terminal B. Lieutenant steps in. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bulk shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, my man. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. The sham has got folks up in your arms, and uh, I'm afraid it's headed towards a conflagration. Hey, then why are you still hanging around? Gotta guard the stuff. Bosses don't look kindly on missing cargo. It gives me some time to work on my rhymes. A rhymesmith? This is quite credible. It goes with his cadence and way of speaking. Who do you think could be conducting the drug trade, then? Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revishal. I'm a guest here. You'll need to find another man to probe with those questions. We wouldn't say he's lying, sire. Hmm. He's a poet. Hit him with your best verse. Ooh. Your best verse? You don't even have a bad verse in here. Just tumbleweeds and liquor stains. Wait, no. What are you doing? She broke me. She fucking broke me. That's brutal, man, but, you know, time will... No, stop. He's already mortified. No, Tommy, these are my rhymes. Listen to me. She fucked me till I bled. That's, um... In the name of God, what are you doing? It's not real, guys. It's not my actual thoughts. It's a poem. Yeah, I get that. And it's cool, but... God damn it. I'll never be the same again. She's always there. Fuck the case. Fuck everything. Total doom. Yeah. He doesn't know what to say, so he just repeats, Yeah, yeah, I get it. These are your rhymes. From your life. Doesn't matter if they're robust. They're honest, so... Thanks, man. He's not lying. He liked the end. Yes, and I also thank you for stopping. He looks at you. We have a drug investigation to return to. How about we do that? Yeah, I'm good for now. Good... <laughs> Good talk, guys. Good talk. Oh, wow. Yeah, failing that was uh, interesting. Um, now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. What's on your mind? Tell me more about the strike, actually. It's like whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands no way in and out or out. Was the union demanding again? Uh, it's some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company. I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard there's a company rep in town, too, like a strike negotiator type. They know what's up, precise demands and so on. What do you think the company wants? I want to keep that money flowing, my man. Takes, makes a ka-ching sound. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side, that's for sure. Anything else I should know? Anything else, he thinks? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Camioneers. A few still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high or laid. He smiles awkwardly. Not that I blame him, really. Not you. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Think and reflect and observe it. Glances down the road towards the horizon. A glint of something in his eyes. What's better than chasing transient pleasures? The more transient, the better. When one's ended, you can go get on to the next one. Hmm. He tries his best to look nonchalant, but there's a rigidity in him, as if trying to conceal something warm and deep beneath a cool exterior. Interesting. One in four chance, about. A little bit more than that. Ah. My man, I want to know about your soul! Yeah, okay. Ease into it. Don't go too far. He seems like a personal matter. Man, you look sad. What's going on with you? Okay, man, just the jams got me down. The fumes, the chemical rainbows, the tarpaulin, stretch on the frames... The dull engine's off. Man recedes into his days of words. Maybe the full-on director approach wasn't correct. Damn, it's tricky business knowing, looking into someone's eyes and not doing it wrong. Uh, that's all for now. But, except it isn't. Uh, because... Nope, still not capable of empathy. Damn. Oh well. So are those three my options, then? Hey, uh, question. Yes. 
Yep, can't do that. But, nope. Okay. <sighs> okay. I mean, I could talk about other things. Actually, one thing I do need to deal with is the fact that I have no money. Well, not enough money for one more day's rent, which apparently will lock me out of the rest of the game. So, I heard there's more to it if I talk to this lady who I... Oh! Who I creepily hugged. Maybe your children are missing. No, absolutely not. Her words come out as quick as gunshots. Okay, so where are they? Are you a policeman or a nanny? She's definitely disturbed by now. I police whatever I want. Where are they? Actually, you know what? Nanny, where are they? They're not missing, sir. You know where they are. They're at home, smoking. Giving the ladder of vices a chance. They're at home, right? Smoking cigarettes? Well, that's just, my daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jamrock. There's nothing to worry about. I was grown up now anyway. They're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. Uh huh. I'm afraid the danger is now greater than ever. Tell me, how old are they? My youngest girl, Jolie, oh god, is just six of, shy of 16. Jenny's turning 18 next month, but we shouldn't even be talking about them. And can you describe their appearance? Any features that stand out? Something to make identifying a little easier. Why do you need to know this? Haven't I repeatedly told you they are not missing, that they're in Jamrock, safe and well at some stupid party? Oh, you sweet, naive woman. Did someone say party? You could use a party. Hunt it down. I could do with a party. Killer party, not a lame one. It's for the investigation. I'm trying to be professional. There's no investigation here. I can tell you that. She picks up a book and tries to concentrate. A flock of seabirds passes by. Okay, must be asked then. What are you doing here? Why are you pursuing this? Is it a hunch? No, it's because someone told me to, that this would work out. Uh, so where... What about your husband? Where could he be? I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Where's this going, officer? So what I'm hearing is you don't really know where your husband is. Yes, but she looks around and takes a deep breath, a little annoyed. I don't really need to know where my husband is, not all the time. Wouldn't you like to? No. She looks you straight in the eye. Her right foot is tapping nervously. I can totally help you find your missing hub husband. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. Tell me something else, then. What else would you be asking her if it wasn't? Hmm. Ma'am, I was also asking about your cockatoo. Is it missing? I even have a cockatoo, and guess what? It's trapped. Never say what. What? If I had it, it wouldn't be missing. Alright, cockatoo not missing. Just want to make sure. Great. <laughs> she turns her attention back to the book stand. I am a terrible person. Just one more question. What did you mean by me being a cockatoo? Nothing. Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Maybe you should. What the cockatoo is your astral captain or your heraldic bird? Apparently that is something I did. Okay. Creepily watch her. Is there something else here? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm satisfied. Now, oh, there might be something more, but I don't know where in that dialogue tree to go. Actually, was there something I... No, I gave her a hug. And that was it. I think that's it. I'm considering that finished, probably. Because I don't remember the details of what else to do. And I really hope that the guy, you know, dealing the drugs is this guy, because God, do I want to get rid of him. But we have no evidence. Fumes of heavy oil weft over you, making your eyes sting. The odor mixes with cigarette residue. Hmm. Nothing interesting. Nothing interesting at all. Although, counterpoint, this lady's clearly drugged up. Like, 100%. Like, you cannot convince me that she isn't. No, man. You caught me at an opportune moment. This awful weather gets in the way. You can entertain me with your questions. Hmm. Ah. I wanted to ask if you'd be interested in smuggling some drugs. Oh. Why do we want to do that? The glory of the world republic. Liberation of the spirit and body. I mean, what in the name of God are you talking about? Okay, let me put this another way. Are you smuggling drugs through Terminal B? 
Her shoulder bones crack as she shrugs. Maybe, probably not. Makes no difference to me either way. You said earlier you don't know what cargo you're hauling. Could it be drugs? Just this month, I made half a dozen trips from Sem... Yes. To Grad on the U-41. What do you think they take from Sem... To Grad. Drugs? No almond. Diamonds. Hmm... Yeah. Well, we got this, too, apparently. So I'll complete the 15th Indo tribe. Who are they? Because there was. The 15th Indo tribe was comprised of eight kids from Falber and North Jamrock, running from the wild dogs in the valley, holding scents under rocks and stealing clothes off clotheslines, and sometimes even the copper wiring off bone lines. You may have been one of them. This must be a childhood memory. The 15th Indo tribe was your Indo tribe, set to rule in Solinde. The rest of the kids are dead now, car accidents and drug overdoses. Only you remain. Ten cents for every green orb clicked. What? That seems great. Can I get that retroactively? Because that would have been great a long time ago. Huh. Ten cents for every green orb clicked. What does that... I'm assuming it means these green orbs that show up around me, but, like... The hell? Oh. Three Ts, how idiomatic. Ah! Interesting. Okay. That doesn't help me immensely, but... Okay. All right, so how do I go about accusing someone? Um, <laughs> interrogate the drugs, the drivers about the smuggling. Yeah, I mean I've tried, but uh, now limited success. A kind of a snow limbo, man. Empathy and conceptualization, which oddly enough I do need more conceptualization for this apparently. Um, let's talk with Siling, whoever, wherever he is. Apparently he's by the canal. Supposedly, you look promising. Yeah, there we go. You see a Samaritan street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. His name Sileng is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer. Everything's cool here. What's so cool? Everything's cool. The goods are cool. The customers are cool. The place is cool. And one more thing, officer. You're very cool. Hey, he makes both hands into finger pistols and fires a few finger bullets into the air. Really, you think I'm cool? Oh yeah, you got style, you got personal style. You know what you like. This man's a delight and he is probably the drug dealer. He surveys his consumer's kingdom with an air of satisfaction. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. He sails back into the pile of boxes and why do I why am I being reminded of like Morty? Oh jeez, Rick. Yeah. That was more of a Peter Griffin laugh, but anyway, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Don't be distracted by the flattering funny man act. Questions. Persuade him to give you some money. Yes? Yes! Start with a little compliment, then work your way up from there. This is about business, remember? Hey, you seem like a real successful entrepreneur. Would you like to support a member of the local police force? Oh, okay. The man stops, his face suddenly serious. But why, officer? Think of it as an investment. An investment? He raises a brow, intrigued. What kind of investment? It's an investment in me, a highly experimental human being. My risk-reward ratio is insane. Actually, I kind of like this, too. It's an investment in your customer base. Gotta prime the pump, man. <laughs> uh, let's go with this. One million real, <laughs> yes. I guess it can't be any riskier than speculating in exotic, <laughs> exotic derivatives. Um, how much is a real? Actually, yeah, ten real. How much are we talking about here? Ah, perfect. Ten real is a bargain for that kind of investment. You got him, my man. He takes a ten note from a leather pouch. Where are you from, Soleil? Me, it's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now, all rubbish all. This man probably comes from Sige, sometimes known as the Apricots to Zerendi. Oh, that's why the racist was saying something about apricots. An archipelago in the Samaran Isola. 
Hmm. Better not to mention. Sounds good. Let's get back to business then. Very cool. Like your style, officer. So, Silang, what's your stance on drugs? Drugs? For a moment, he's unsure how to respond. I don't go in for that, officer. Drugs ruin lives. Unless you're into drugs, of course, in which case drugs are excellent. He kisses his fingers. Tasty, tasty drugs. Uh, I actually don't like drugs that much. It's very cool. I don't like drugs either. I only said I do because I didn't want to sound lame. He smiles. Peer pressure. Sir, it appears to be true. No drugs in sight, not on the box of sunglasses or under the speakers. Yeah, but I'm also super into drugs. That's cool, especially after you said you don't like them. All the cool detectives do drugs without liking them. Sadly, I don't have any drugs on sale here. He smiles. Nice. I like that they caught that. We're looking for a lorry driver who's transporting drugs out of the harbor. He or she is in this traffic jam. That's even cooler. You're investigating that and all. But uh, he points to the goods. I'm not a lorry driver. I'm just a street vendor. I don't know anything about that. A blatant lie, sire. Yet he tells it with such conviction. We'd believe him if we didn't know better. But you are a lorry man. Another driver has identified you and your lorry. Who said that? It's the fat racist, right? I bet it's him. He has an agenda against me because I'm an immigrant who works harder than he does. He's a hater. So admit you're a lorry driver. No, I just said I work harder and he's an asshole. I'm... He stops to think. Realizing he can't get out of it. Smart man. Okay, maybe I'm a lorry driver too. A little. But that's not my most important thing about me. That's my day job. This is my dream. He spreads his arms. Hmm. Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Eh, yeah, let's let him squirm a little bit more. So you forgot to tell me. Exactly. It's such a small part of my life. It's in the rearview mirror now. I'm climbing out of that hole with ingenuity. Yeah, so... Or, alternatively... See, that's the thing. I don't know which direction to go. Let's go with this. Stop squirming. What do you know about the drug operation at the harbor? Nothing, I told you. I'm not a dumb guy. I don't get involved with that crowd. And what crowd is that? Crowd, you know, the drug crowd. No, he wasn't talking about an abstract crowd. It was that crowd. It wasn't some drug crowd. You know who they are. Tell me now. Okay, if you don't know, I'll tell your employer you've been selling his stuff. No use, he's not telling us. He's too afraid. We need to take him to my station and ask him there. After we've called his boss. Okay, look. The vendor looks around, then lowers his voice. There's bad people doing bad things here. That's all I know. Please don't get me into this mess. I've spent 15 years working my way up. Here we go. There's a tiny bit of truth on the table. Zoom in on it. We're buddies, Selang. Help us out. No one will know it was you. It's a she, okay? The other drivers call her the lady driver. You're better off staying away from her. The way they talk about her, he shakes his head. She's no lady. Interesting. Could this driver be connected to the Hardy Boys? Is the lady driver the old woman back there? Points to the pale driver. Dazed out? Strange? I don't know. Maybe if she is, I haven't gotten near her. I don't get involved. I told you. Could be. She was strange. He's not ruling her out. Could she be associated with the Hardy Boys, perhaps? I don't know. I'm not local. I don't know anything about that. Who are these other drivers who talk? All of them. I don't know. I told you all I know. Are we cool now? Or really want us to be cool now? Who exactly is talking about this lady driver of yours? The racist or the other one with their tattoos? All of them. Even the ones who've left. I'm hanging out with them. I don't remember who has tattoos. Okay, we're cool now. Alright, snaps back to his usual self. Ice cold. Let's cap this off by a purchase. You can walk away from here with funky sunglasses. Detective, both of you. You deserve it. Look around. Thanks. What do you got, actually? Just out of curiosity. Fallen sneakers on a pedestal of speakers. You see two lowly defeated speakers. Thralls. Slaves, basically. Perched atop them like conquerors, surveying land. A pair of fallen, durable wear sneakers. Ultra I can Ultra see you seared. have a taste for luxury, officer. Can't keep your eyes off those sneakers? Inspect the speakers. These once respectable speakers have been conquered, reduced to a mere prop by the indomitable fallen ultras atop them. A small heat emboss on the veneer reads, Solitary aid from the People's Republic of Samara. Solid solidarity aid, rather. Speakers themselves don't seem to display any magical qualities. No, no, don't look at the speakers, officer. Look at the sneakers. <laughs> oh... The man points to the footway. The sneakers are the star here. What about the speakers, though? Doesn't anyone want them? Aw, oh, poor little speakers. Pat them. No, don't pity them, officer. These are old Samaran garbage. Don't even look at them. Check out these super cool Fallen Ultras instead. Samaran trash? That sounds like they're from the Samaran People's Republic. Produced on the dictatorship of the proletariat. What? Dictatorship of the proletariat. Can I just buy the sad, conquered Samaran speakers? No way, officer. These aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Lo-fi socialist junk. I need some speakers. If you want them, he pauses for a moment, calculating. But see, 
they're the pedestal for my sneakers. If I let go of the speakers, well, the sneakers go. I can't leave premium lifestyle sneakers on the ground. If, on the other hand, you wanted to buy the sneakers, too, I can maybe throw in the speakers for a little extra, 50 cents. Damn, so you have to buy the sneakers first. Damn. Inspect them. A pair of Fallen Ultras. The design is impossibly sleek and simple. A futuristic silhouette with a sleek monochrome colorway. A jet black upper and silver lined midsole. Those sneakers, mister. The uh, street vendor in tones. Those sneakers are the latest Fallen sneakers. Super rare, super fine, super cool. Only 50 real. Nope. Only that's madness. I need those Fallen. You really don't, buddy. You really, really don't. Nope. Goodbye. More importantly, I have money for rent. So, goodbye, and we have a hint as to who we're going to be talking to later, but... Ah, uh, priorities. First things first. Get in here, pay my rent, so I don't have any temptation to spend the extra money. Which I guarantee you there will be in just a little bit, but eh, we'll leave it be for now. Can I help you? About my bill for tonight. Yes, I do. Aha. And with that, thank you all very much for your time. Now the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly. And I will see you all soon when we um, debate options. Debate options is what we'll do. Probably actually interrogate both of these other drivers again. But matters for the future. Goodbye for now.